In this module, I'm going to go over the word screen, including the main tabs and ribbons, the contextual tabs, and end on the key tips. Let's begin by reviewing the many components that make up the word screen. I'm going to start at the top left and work my way down to the bottom right. Okay, let's go to the very top left, and we have the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar allows you to add commands to the main screen for easy access at any point while working on a document. If we come below the Quick Access Toolbar, we've got our main tabs and ribbons. Commands are organized under various tabs called ribbons. Instead of organizing the options under drop-down menus, they're organized horizontally on ribbons for easier access and viewing. Now if we come over to the right of our tabs and ribbons, we've got the Tell Me What To Do or the Help area. This is a text field where you enter words or phrases about what you want to do next, or to quickly get to features you want to use or to actions you want to perform. You can also use this feature to find what you are looking for or to use the Smart Lookup for further research. All you need to do is type it in and it will pull up the command for you. So as an example, let's type in Change Margins. So we'll click in the Tell Me What To Do area and type in Change Margins. Once we type this in, it's going to give us our options. Our first option is to adjust our margins. If we click on this, it's going to bring up our dialog box for changing our margins. We can pick one of the settings here or click on Custom Margins. So what it is actually doing is taking us to the command so that we can make the physical change to our margins. Our other options are get help on change margins or do a smart lookup. But let's go back to change margins. If we wanted to actually change our margin, we could click on one of the options and it makes the change for us. So it is great for when you forget where that feature or command is. Type it in, it'll pull up the action for you and you can handle it from right there. So that is the Tell Me What To Do or Help. Now if we move above our tabs and ribbons, we have the title bar. This lists the name of the document. If it has not yet been saved, it will default to document and number. So because this document has not been saved to my system yet, it's called document one. If I had multiple unsaved documents open, they would be numbered sequentially, document one, document two, and so forth. If we move over to the right, it's got my name, this is who's signed in, and then further to the right, we've got our ribbon display options. If we click on this, we have three options available to us. Auto hide ribbon, clicking on that will actually hide the ribbon and the commands. So we've got more real estate if we're working on a large document and want to be able to see more of it on the screen, this is a great option to use. Anytime you want to go back to your tabs or ribbons, go to the very top of your screen and click and it'll pull them back down for you. If we come back over, our second option was Show Tabs. This will show you the tabs. It won't show you any of the commands or ribbons with the tabs. It'll just show you the tabs. This is great because it gives you still more real estate, but it still lets you see the tabs so you don't have to go to the very top of your screen to bring them down each time. The final option is Show Tabs and Commands. This is where it's going to show you the tabs and it's going to show you all the commands within the ribbon that's highlighted. If we go farther over to the right, we've got our minimize, our restore down or maximize, and our close. Below that, we've got our share option. This is where you share your work with others. You can invite other people to view or edit cloud-based documents that you have. Now if we come all the way down to the very bottom, We've got our status bar shortcuts. The status bar shortcuts show you current information about your document. For instance, I'm in section one, page one of one, and my cursor is at 3.7 inches. I'm at line 12, column two, and there are 15 words in my document, and I have track changes turned off. Now, if you wanna make changes to your status bar shortcuts, you do a right click on the status bar, it's going to bring up the customized status bar dialog box. It's a toggle on and off. Anything that's checked is on, unchecked is turned off. So if I wanted to change the options that are on my status bar, this is where I would come. Let's go ahead and turn off section, my vertical position, I don't care about the column, language will turn off, and I want to know when I'm in overtype versus insert. Once I've made my changes, Click within my document, it closes the status bar dialog box, and I can see the changes that I've made. And now it shows me I'm in an insert mode, and I've removed where I am within my document and the columns.
Now if I come over to the far right, I get my zoom options. Right now it shows that I'm in print layout view. I can click on read mode, switch to web layout, and I can also zoom in and out on my document depending on what will make it easier while I'm editing my document. Let's click back to my print layout. One last thing I want to show you before we move more into the tabs and ribbons is the format with the mini toolbar. Anytime you have an object or text highlighted within your document, it's going to bring up the mini toolbar with format. This allows you to quickly make formatting changes without having to go up to the tabs or ribbons. So if I want to highlight, bold, I can do that without having to go up to the tab and ribbon. So that's an overview of the Word screen and its components. Let's now move into the tabs and ribbons themselves. The ribbon is where the majority of Word commands are and where setting changes are made. The ribbon is divided into many tabs. Each tab is divided into groups and each group contains like commands. Additionally, within your tabs and ribbons, you're going to have a couple other features. One's called the show gallery. For instance, over here in the styles, we've got a drop down arrow. If we click on this, it's going to show us more style options that are available for us. So what the show gallery does, it'll display tiles that were not listed, such as here. When we clicked on it, it brought us out to show us more of the styles. Another option you have in your tabs and ribbons is the dialog box launcher. When you click on the dialog box launcher, what it's going to do is open up a box relevant to the group's function. For instance, when I clicked on the font dialog box launcher, it takes me into the font dialog box to show me more functions and features that are available for fonts. If I do the same thing on paragraphs, it'll take me into the paragraph dialog box launcher and bring up all the features that are available with paragraphs. So now that we've gone over that, let's move into each of the tabs and ribbons and go over them in a little bit more detail. The first one we're going to start on is the Home tab. The Home tab contains the most common functions and features in Word, and it's the tab that you go to when you open up a document, hence the name Home. It's like your home base. It contains your clipboard, your font, paragraph, and styles group in addition to editing. Let's move over to our File tab. The File tab works differently than any of Word's other tabs as it does not give a set of commands on the ribbon. Instead, when you click File, you are taken to the area that Microsoft calls the Backstage. This is the area where you work with your document or file as a whole rather than individual changes within the document. This tab contains many of the common file tasks, which include New, Open, Save, print, export, and close. If you want to return to your document from the file tab, go to the very top to the arrow with the circle around it, and that will take you back to your document. Now let's move over to the right and go to the insert tab. The insert tab provides additional functions for things that you may need to insert into your document. So anything you're inserting into your document would be found under the insert tab, such as tables, pictures, shapes, charts, smart art, comments, your header and footer information, text boxes, symbols, etc. So anything you're inserting is under the insert tab. Let's go to the draw tab, which is the next tab over. This is where you would come if you want to draw within your document. So if you wanted to draw within your document, do ink to math, erase our drawing, and so forth. This is where you would come. Anything to do with drawing, you come to the Draw tab. Now let's switch over to our Design tab. The Design tab gives you functions for overall design of your document, including pre-designed templates. So if I wanted to change my style, my theme, my coloring, put a watermark, this is where I would come to do all of that. Anything to do with the design of the document would be under the Design tab. If we click on the Layout tab, the Layout tab contains the commands that ultimately change the layout of your document, such as your margins, your orientation, if you want to put columns into your document, want to add your breaks, your section breaks. It has to do with the layout of the document. This is where you would come to do this. Our next tab over is References. The References tab contains commands that reference information in your document, such as your table of contents, your footnotes, bibliography, citations, 
captions, index, and table of authorities. So if you're referencing anything within your document, always remember the References tab is where you would come to do that. Mailings tab. The Mailings tab contains commands that allow you to create mail merge documents, envelopes and labels and so forth for mailings. So this is where you would come for that. So if I wanted to come out and create a mailing to send to all my contacts, this is where I could come to create it. Okay, let's go over to our Review tab. The Review tab contains commands to review your document, such as proofing, adding comments to it, doing track changes. If I wanted to compare multiple documents, I would come here. If I needed to do a word count on my document, this is where I would come to do that as well. So anything to do with proofing, go to the Review tab because you're reviewing your document. Now let's go over to the View tab. The View tab contains commands to change the view of the document, such as displaying the ruler, which I have turned on. I could turn on the navigation pane so I could move through a large document quickly based upon the headings or pages. It gives me the ability to navigate quickly. I can also change my view. Just as I did down in the lower right corner where I changed to read mode, print layout, or web layout, I could do that from the views here. I can also change to outline and draft views. And I can do my zooming here as well. I can also change it if I want to see multiple pages of my document. Under the Windows group, this is where I could split my document. So if I were cutting and pasting from one area of my document into another, I could split it so it was much easier for me to pull the information from one area and put into another without having to scroll. Or if I had two documents that I was working on and I wanted to review them, I could put them side by side and scroll through them. Now the last tab I want to show you is the Outline tab. So if I switch my view to Outline, I get my outlining tab. The outlining tab is handy if you're working on a large document that's got multiple headings and so forth in it. You can expand the headings, shrink the headings, so that you can work in dif different sections of your document. Or if you've got a master document with sub-documents, this is where you would come to work on that as well. So we'll close out of that and go back to our main document. Let's begin reviewing the contextual tabs that you can have within your document. The first type of contextual tab pertains to drawings. So if you have a drawing within your document, if you highlight it or select it, you'll get the contextual tab format for drawing tools. If we click on this tab, it will give us all the formatting options available for our drawing, inserting additional shapes, shape styles, word styles, text, and we can also arrange our drawings. If we come down and click on our picture, you'll notice that we also have a contextual tab for it, for formatting the picture. Once we click on the Format tab, we can come out and add a style to our picture, change the effect of it, wrap it if we had text around it, we could crop the picture if we wanted to just have a section of it available, and so forth. So that is the contextual tab that's available for pictures. Now once I clicked outside my picture, you notice that the tab is gone. The contextual tabs are only available when you've selected an object that has a contextual tab attached to it. If we come down to Tables, I will select my table. Once I have my table highlighted, I have two tabs available, Design and Layout. Design tab gives me various design options available for my table. Come out, change my shading, change my lines, oops, there we go, and so forth. I can also come out to my layout and change the layout of the table. If I want to split my cells, split the table, insert columns to the left or right, change my alignment, and so forth. Those are the contextual tabs that are available for my table. Now if I scroll down to my Smart Art, you'll notice I have two contextual tabs available for Smart Art tools, Design and Format. The Design gives me various design options. I can change my colors, move to the left or right, add shapes, change my text, and so forth come out to my format, I can change my shape styles, I can add outline shapes, change my word art, and so forth. Those are the two contextual tabs that belong with SmartArt. If you have a chart within your document and you select the chart, you have two contextual tabs available for charts, design and format. With the design, I can come out and change my design, change my colors selected, add elements, pick a quick layout, I can come over to my format, I can add some shape styles to it, 
I could come out and insert some shapes in there. If I wanted to highlight something specifically, I could come out and do that as well. Once I click outside my chart, the contextual tabs for my charts are gone. Header and footer. If you click within the header or footer area on your document, the contextual tab design will be available. From here, I can choose the type of header or footer or page number I want to add. I can add additional items to my header or footer. If I want to add a date, I can do that. I can add author name and so forth. I can insert pictures, quick parts. I can navigate around, so if I wanted to go to the header or to the next footer, I can do that as well. I can also choose my options if I want a different first page or different odd and even, or where I want my header to be positioned, I can change that as well. Double click within my document, and the contextual tab for my header and footer is removed. Now the last one I want to show you is for equations. If you put equations into your document, such as I have done here, highlight the equation, you're going to get your equation tools or your design tab for the equation tools. From here, I could ink another equation, I could add symbols, or I can add structure to my equation. That's all available with the contextual tab for design. So those are the various contextual tabs that are available. Again, anytime you select an object that has tabs attached to it, they'll become available. Once you click outside that object, those tabs will disappear. Now let's move on to the key tips. Key tips are shortcut keys that give you access to the ribbon commands without using your mouse. To access the key tips, hit the Alt key. Once you hit the Alt key, the key tips will appear over each command available in the current view. For instance here, I've got the key tips available for each of the ribbons and also my quick access keys. If I wanted to go into, say for instance, my design, I would type G. It takes me into the design tab and I've got the ribbon commands available. From here, I could use my mouse to go to one of the options or I can continue using my keyboard. If I wanted to go to my colors, I would do TC and it would take me to the colors. From here, I can use my up and down arrows to scroll through them or I can also use the mouse. Pick the color I want and continue on. If I hit the Alt key again, it's going to give me the key tips for each of the tabs and I can move on to another option. If I wanted to add a comment, I could go to Review and hit C and type in my comment. If I hit the Alt key again, it's going to give me the key tips again for all the tabs so I can pick whatever I want to do. Now, to exit out of the key tips, all you need to do is hit the Escape key. Once you do that, it'll remove it from the screen. So that is the key tips. Again, very quick and easy to use. Hit the Alt key, it brings up the key tips, makes it much easier for you to use the keyboard if you prefer to use that instead of always using the mouse. As a review of this module, we've gone over the screen components of Word, the main tabs for Word, contextual tabs, and the key tips.